the distress call blared through the human fleet, tinny and desperate. Nobody knows what to do. We need human help now, or billions will die. Captain Jax stared grimly at the star map, the red lines of the alien attack pulsing closer to the populated worlds with each passing second. Most of the alien coalition fleet had already been smashed to bits by the unknown invaders. Their strange weapons cut through shields like paper, hulls bursting apart in flames. Now the alien refugees were flooding human space, begging for protection, offering tech, ships, and territory. Humanity had to act fast to stop the enemy advance. If the human fleet failed to break the siege of Halcyon Station, it would open a path straight to Earth. All of human space would burn. Helm, set course for Halcyon, maximum speed, Jax ordered. Ready weapons and shields. Looks like the aliens need us to clean up their mess as usual. He cracked his knuckles. Let's show them what humans can do. The Galactic Council chamber was in an uproar. Representatives from a dozen species shouted and argued, the cacophony of their voices echoing off the vaulted ceiling. The wise Eldari, normally calm and collected, slammed his fist on the podium. Order! We must have order! he bellowed. The noise died down to a low murmur as all eyes turned to the ancient alien. The Zorgans have already conquered a dozen systems. Their fleets are heading for the Cortex homeworld as we speak. We must find a way to stop them before it's too late. A Verosian diplomat stood, her blue skin flushed with anger. The Zorgans' weapons are too powerful. Our shields are useless against them. We have already lost countless ships and soldiers trying to halt their advance. I fear there is no hope for us. The chamber erupted into chaos once more. Council members shouted over each other, some calling for surrender, others for a last stand. Amidst the pandemonium, a cloaked figure rose from their seat in the back of the room. As they glided towards the center of the chamber, the arguing died down. It was Zorax, the enigmatic leader of the Zilarians. There is one option we have not yet considered, Zorax said, his voice low and rasping. A species on the edge of known space, primitive in technology, but possessing a fierce warrior spirit. I have observed them from afar, and I believe they may be our only hope. The Eldari leaned forward, intrigued. Who are these beings you speak of, Zorax? They call themselves humans, Zorax replied. They are a young species, having only recently achieved interstellar travel, but they have a remarkable ability to adapt and innovate in the face of adversity. Their history is one of constant warfare and conflict, yet they always emerge stronger for it. The Cortex representative, a spindly insectoid, clicked his mandibles in disapproval. You would have us place our fate in the hands of savages. They are not even members of the Galactic Council. Zorax fixed the Cortex with a piercing stare. Desperate times call for desperate measures. The humans may be our only chance to turn the tide against the Zorgons. I propose we send an envoy to their world to seek an alliance and bring them into the fold. The council members looked to each other uncertainly. Finally, the Eldari spoke. Very well, Zorax. We will trust your judgment in this matter, but who will we send as our ambassador? It will be a dangerous mission, with no guarantee of success. A tall, muscular cortex stood, his exoskeleton gleaming under the chamber lights. I will go, he said, his voice deep and resonant. I am Captain Raxos, the finest explorer and diplomat of my people. I will make contact with the humans and convince them to join our cause. The Eldari nodded solemnly. Then it is decided. Captain Raxos will travel to Earth and seek the aid of the humans. May the stars guide you on your journey, and may you return with the allies we so desperately need. As the council members filed out of the chamber, talking in hushed tones, Zorax approached Captain Raxos. Be careful, my friend, he warned. The humans are unlike any species we have encountered before. They are unpredictable, and their ways are strange to us. But if you can win their trust and their loyalty, they may just be the key to our salvation. Raxos placed a hand on Zorax's shoulder. I will not fail, Zorax. I will find these humans and bring them to our side. Together we will drive the Zorgons back to the abyss from whence they came. With a final nod, Raxos turned and strode out of the council chamber. 
his mind already racing with plans for the journey ahead. The fate of the galaxy now rested on his shoulders, and the shoulders of a primitive species called humans. He could only hope that Zorax was right, and that the humans would prove to be the saviors they so desperately needed. The sleek, cloaked ship descended through Earth's atmosphere, its advanced stealth technology rendering it invisible to the primitive radar systems of the planet's inhabitants. Captain Raxos guided the craft with practiced precision, his mind racing with thoughts of the monumental task that lay ahead. He had studied the humans from afar, poring over the limited data the Council had collected on their culture and technology. But now, as he prepared to set foot on their world for the first time, he felt a sense of trepidation and uncertainty. The ship touched down in a remote forest clearing, its landing gear sinking into the soft earth with a gentle hiss. Raxos powered down the engines and activated the ship's cloaking field, ensuring that it would remain hidden from prying eyes. He checked his equipment one last time, making sure that his translator, disguise matrix and personal shield were all functioning properly. Then, with a deep breath, he opened the hatch and stepped out into the cool, crisp air of an earth morning. As Raxos made his way through the dense underbrush, his senses were assaulted by a barrage of unfamiliar sights, sounds and smells. The towering trees, the chirping of strange birds, the earthy scent of decaying leaves. It was all so different from the sterile, controlled environments of the Council worlds. But what struck him most was the sheer diversity of life on this planet, the endless variations of flora and fauna that seemed to thrive in every nook and cranny. Raxos trekked for hours, his enhanced physiology allowing him to cover vast distances without tiring. As he crested a hill, he suddenly found himself on the outskirts of a human settlement, a sprawling metropolis of glass and steel that stretched as far as the eye could see. Raxos stood in awe marvelling at the ingenuity and technological prowess of these seemingly primitive beings. But as he watched the humans going about their daily lives, he began to notice the cracks in their shining façade. He saw the homeless and destitute huddled in alleyways, the discarded refuse littering the streets, the signs of violence and decay that seemed to permeate every corner of the city. It was a stark contrast to the gleaming towers and sparkling cars that zoomed by on elevated highways, a testament to the fundamental contradictions that lay at the heart of human civilization. Raxos knew that he needed to find a human who could help him navigate this strange and chaotic world, someone with the skills and knowledge to aid him in his mission. He had spent weeks studying Earth's military forces, analyzing their tactics and capabilities, and he had settled on a target, a remote military base where some of the planet's most elite soldiers were trained. Infiltrating the base was child's play for Raxos, his advanced stealth technology allowing him to slip past the primitive security systems undetected. He made his way to the training grounds, where he observed a group of soldiers engaged in a complex combat simulation, and that's when he saw him, Sergeant Jake Tanner, a grizzled veteran with a fierce intensity in his eyes. Tanner moved with a fluid grace, his every action precise and deliberate. He barked orders to his squad, coordinating their movements with a natural authority that spoke of years of experience. Raxos watched as Tanner led his team through the simulated battlefield, adapting to every challenge with quick thinking and decisive action. As the exercise came to an end, Raxos saw his opportunity. He approached Tanner deactivating his disguise matrix and revealing his true form, a tall, lithe alien with shimmering blue skin and piercing silver eyes. Tanner reacted instantly, dropping into a combat stance and reaching for his weapon. Hold, human, Raxos said, holding up his hands in a gesture of peace. I mean you no harm. I come with a message of utmost urgency, one that concerns the fate of your world and countless others. Tanner eyed the alien warily, his finger hovering over the trigger of his rifle. Talk fast, then, and give me one good reason why I shouldn't blast you back to whatever corner of space you crawled out of. Raxos took a deep breath, knowing that his next words would be crucial. I am Captain Raxos of the Galactic Council, and my people are facing an existential threat. A ruthless species known as the Zorgans has launched an all-out invasion, 
conquering and enslaving every world in their path. We have exhausted every option, and now we turn to you, the humans, as our last hope. Tanner's eyes narrowed, his skepticism plain on his face, and why should we help you? We've got plenty of our own problems to deal with here on Earth. Because if the Zorgans succeed in conquering the Council Worlds, they will not stop there, Raxos replied, his voice grave. They will continue their rampage across the galaxy, devouring every species in their path, and eventually they will come for Earth. But if we stand together, if humans and aliens can put aside our differences and fight as one, we may yet have a chance to stop them. Tanner was silent for a long moment, his gaze searching Raxos's face for any sign of deception. Finally, he lowered his weapon. I'm not saying I trust you, alien, but if what you're saying is true, then we can't afford to ignore it. What do you need from me? Raxos felt a surge of relief and gratitude. I need you to come with me, Sergeant Tanner. I need you to be the voice and face of humanity in this fight. Your people have a reputation for being fierce warriors, for never backing down from a challenge. If we can harness that spirit, that Tenacity, then perhaps we can turn the tide against the Zorgons. Tanner nodded slowly, a glint of determination in his eyes. Okay, Captain. I'm in. Let's go show these Zorgon bastards what happens when you mess with humanity. As Raxos led Tanner back to his ship, he couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope. The road ahead would be long and perilous, but with humans like Jake Tanner at their side, the Council might just stand a chance. And as the ship lifted off into the sky, Raxos knew that the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, and that the next chapter in this epic struggle was about to begin. As the sleek alien craft touched down on the landing pad of the Galactic Council's headquarters, Sergeant Jake Tanner couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and trepidation. The towering spires and gleaming domes of the Council's seat of power were unlike anything he had ever seen on Earth. A testament to the advanced technology and architectural prowess of the myriad species that called this place home. Tanner stepped out of the ship, his combat boots clanking against the polished metal of the landing pad. He was immediately greeted by a contingent of council guards, their armor and weapons a dizzying array of shapes and colors. They escorted him through the winding corridors of the council building, past soaring atriums and bustling chambers filled with alien dignitaries and bureaucrats. Finally, they arrived at a massive training complex where Tanner was subjected to a grueling series of tests and simulations designed to push him to his limits. He found himself dodging laser blasts in a holographic war zone one moment and navigating a treacherous alien jungle the next. Despite the unfamiliar terrain and advanced technology, Tanner relied on his years of training and combat experience to adapt and overcome. He rolled, ducked, and weaved his way through the simulations, his reflexes and instincts guiding him through each challenge. The Council observers watched in amazement as this lone human soldier consistently outperformed their expectations, displaying a level of skill and tenacity that rivaled even their most elite warriors. As the final simulation ended, Tanner stood panting and sweat-drenched in the center of the training room. Captain Raxos approached him, a look of pride and satisfaction on his alien features. Well done, Sergeant Tanner, he said, clasping the human's shoulder. You have proven yourself worthy of the task at hand. But not everyone was convinced. As Tanner was led into the council chambers for a formal introduction, he could feel the eyes of the various alien representatives boring into him, some curious, others wary, one figure in particular, an elderly Eldari with piercing blue eyes and flowing robes, seemed particularly sceptical. Councillor Valeris, Raxo said, gesturing to the Eldari, may I present Sergeant Jake Tanner of Earth, our new ally in the fight against the Zorgans. Valeris fixed Tanner with a steely gaze, his brow furrowed in concern. Captain Raxos, while I commend your efforts to seek aid from beyond our borders, I must express my reservations about involving such a primitive and unpredictable species in our war. Tanner bristled at the word primitive, but held his tongue as Valerius continued. The humans are an unknown quantity, their history riddled with violence and chaos. How can we be sure that they will not turn their weapons against us, or worse, join forces with the Zorgons themselves? At this, Tanner could no longer remain silent. He stepped forward, 
his voice ringing out clear and strong in the cavernous chamber. With all due respect, Councillor Valeris, you underestimate the resilience and determination of the human spirit. He began to pace back and forth, his eyes blazing with intensity. Throughout our history, we have faced countless challenges and adversaries, from tyrannical regimes to natural disasters to existential threats. And each time, we have risen to the occasion, drawing on our ingenuity, our courage, and our unwavering commitment to freedom and justice. Tanner's voice grew louder, more passionate. When the odds were stacked against us, when all hope seemed lost, we refused to surrender. We fought on, adapting to new circumstances, forging unlikely alliances, and never losing sight of our ultimate goal. From the American Revolution to World War II to the global campaign against terrorism, humans have proven time and again that we will not be broken or bowed by any foe. He turned to face the council members, his gaze sweeping over the assembled aliens. I stand before you today not as a primitive savage, but as a soldier, a warrior, and a representative of my species. I vow to lead a human contingent in the fight against the Zorgans, to bring the full might of human ingenuity and determination to the battlefield. Together, we will drive these invaders back to the hell from whence they came, and restore peace and freedom to the galaxy. As Tanner finished his speech, a hush fell over the chamber. For a long moment no one spoke, the weight of his words hanging heavy in the air. Then, slowly, a murmur of approval began to build, as one by one, the council members nodded their assent. Raxos turned to Tanner, a fierce grin spreading across his face. Well said, Sergeant. Well said indeed. The council has heard your words, and we accept your offer of aid. Together, we will stand against the Zorgans and defend the galaxy from their tyranny. Tanner felt a surge of adrenaline and purpose coursing through his veins, a sense that he was part of something greater than himself. He knew that the road ahead would be long and perilous, that the Zorgons would not be defeated easily, but with the strength of the human spirit and the might of the Galactic Council behind him, he was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. As he shook hands with Raxos and the other Council members, Tanner couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and determination, Humanity had been called to the stars to take their place on the galactic stage, and he would be damned if he let his species down. With the Council's reluctant blessing, I returned to Earth, my mind buzzing with the enormity of the task ahead. I had to assemble a team of the best and brightest individuals with the skills and guts to take on the Zorgans. My first stop was my old buddy from boot camp, Corporal Mike Bulldog Johnson. The big man crushed me in a bear hug, his booming laugh echoing through the bar where we met. Tanner, you crazy bastard, I knew you'd come calling sooner or later. What's the job? I leaned in close, my voice low and serious. Bulldog, I need you for a mission. But not just any mission, we're talking fate of the galaxy stuff here. Bulldog's eyes widened, but he didn't hesitate. I'm in, brother. Where you go, I go. Next on my list was Dr. Emily Reeves a brilliant xenobiologist with a reputation for thinking outside the box. I found her in her lab, hunched over a microscope, her red hair pulled back in a messy bun. Dr. Reeves, I called out, trying not to startle her. She looked up, her green eyes sharp and curious. That's me, and you are? Sergeant Jake Tanner, ma'am, I have a proposition for you. I explained the situation, watching her expression shift from skepticism to fascination to determination. Alien technology, you say? I'm intrigued. Count me in, Sergeant. Last but not least was Jack MacMagiver, a maverick engineer known for his unorthodox solutions to complex problems. I tracked him down at a junkyard, where he was elbow-deep in grease and scrap metal. Mac! I shouted over the noise. Got a minute! He looked up, wiping his hands on his overalls. Tanner, what brings you to my neck of the woods? I grinned. A chance to use that big brain of yours to save the galaxy, you in? Mac's eyes lit up, a slow smile spreading across his face. Hell yeah, I'm in. With my team assembled, we threw ourselves into training. The Galactic Council provided us with access to their most advanced weaponry and technology, 
and we spent every waking moment mastering it. Bulldog took to the alien firearms like a fish to water, his big hands making the high-tech blasters look like toys. Dr. Reeves immersed herself in the study of Zorgon biology and tactics, looking for weaknesses we could exploit. And Mac? Well, he did what he did best, taking the alien tech apart and putting it back together, in ways that made even our alien allies scratch their heads. As we trained, reports kept coming in of more planets falling to the Zorgons. The Galactic Council grew more desperate with each passing day, and I could feel the weight of their expectations bearing down on us. Councillor Valerius was the most vocal critic, his doubt in human capabilities spreading like a cancer among the other members. But we didn't have time to worry about politics. We had a job to do, and failure was not an option. Our first mission was a daring raid on a key Zorgon supply depot, a heavily guarded installation that was crucial to their invasion efforts. We spent days planning, going over every detail, every contingency, we studied the layout of the depot, the guard rotations, the weak points in their defences. And when the time came, we struck like lightning. Mac hacked their security systems, causing chaos and confusion among the Zorgon ranks. Dr. Reeves used her knowledge of their physiology to devise a chemical compound that would incapacitate them without killing them. And Bulldog? Well, he did what he did best, charging in with guns blazing a one-man army of destruction. I led the charge, my heart pounding in my chest as we fought our way through the depot. Zorgon soldiers fell before us, their advanced armor no match for our human ingenuity and determination. We secured the depot's control room, planting explosives that would cripple their supply lines for months. As we made our escape, alarms blaring and Zorgon reinforcements closing in, I couldn't help but feel a surge of pride. We had done it. We had struck a blow against the enemy, proven our worth to the Galactic Council. But even as we celebrated our victory, I knew that this was only the beginning. The Zorgans would not take this defeat lightly, and they would come at us with everything they had. We would have to be ready to adapt and evolve, and fight with every ounce of strength we possessed. For the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, and we were humanity's last hope. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support me, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And for every comment that says, I liked the story, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.